So maybe there are flaws in the ways that scientists calculate the age of things. If you go to practically any museum of natural history, they'll tell you that dinosaur fossils are tens of millions of years old. But how can they be sure? The contradiction, though, is that you have these specimens, coal, uh, wood, even dinosaur bones, that are supposed to be tens or even hundreds of millions of years old, and yet there's still detectable carbon-14 in them. And that just should not be the case. And we think this is illustrating that one of the key assumptions of the method is wrong, the assumption that the decay rates have been constant. Because if you assume that the decay rates have been constant throughout Earth history, you will get millions and billions of years for those dates. But that very assumption leads to a contradiction. If the decay rates have been constant throughout history, then those fossils really are millions of years old, and there should not be any carbon-14 in them, or at least none that we can detect, but there is. And so that's telling us, we think, that there's a problem with the method. Another indication that there's something wrong with the method involves these little crystals called zircons that we find in granite. And within the zircons, you have uranium-238, which is radioactive. And it goes through this multi-step process where that uranium-238 is transformed into lead, a particular isotope of lead. Now, if you look, for instance, at the amount of lead in the zircons, you can figure out how many years of decay that would be at today's rates. And it's about one and a half billion years. So if you're looking at the lead in the zircons, you would conclude that it's about one and a half billion years old. But there's another decay product that occurs in this process, and that's helium. When the uranium turns into lead, you have helium nuclei being produced, basically helium atoms minus the electrons. And so they eventually, along the way, they're gonna pick up a couple of electrons and they will become full-blown helium atoms. Well, these helium atoms, they don't react very well with other substances, and it's very easy for it to leak out of the zircons. If these zircons really are one and a half billion years old, why is it that we still see large amounts of helium within the zircons? Because if they're really one and a half billion years old, most of that helium should have leaked out. So here, we have a contradiction within a single method. You have two decay products. You've got lead, you've got helium, and they're giving you two different ages for the zircon. And again, how do you resolve that paradox? Well, one way to resolve it would be if the decay rates have changed in the past. Blue stars are also an indication of the youth of the universe. You see, blue stars are some of the most massive, most luminous stars that exist. They expend their fuel at an incredibly rapid rate. Even though they have a lot of fuel available, they're very massive, they, they burn it up very quickly. It's kind of like an SUV. They've got a big gas tank, but they get very poor gas mileage. And for that reason, they cannot last hundreds of millions of years. In fact, the hottest, bluest stars, even secular astronomers will acknowledge, they can't last even a million years, some of these. And yet we find them all throughout the universe, a universe that's allegedly 13.8 billion years old. Just how old is the universe? Well, it doesn't have an expiration tag, but we can make some estimates by looking at things in our universe, like the moon. As the moon orbits the Earth, its gravity pulls on the oceans, causing tides. And as the tides pull on the moon, they cause it to move about an inch and a half away from the Earth each year. That means that 6,000 years ago, the moon would have been about 800 feet closer to the Earth. Not a problem. But if the Earth and Moon were over 4 billion years old, then they would have been touching, and that wouldn't have been good. So the Moon shows that the universe is several thousand years old. That makes sense when we also look at comets. They lose large amounts of material each time they pass around the Sun, so they wouldn't even be around after billions of years. And the inner regions of spiral galaxies rotate pretty fast. If the galaxies and the universe altogether were billions of years old, they'd be too twisted up to look like they do now. So everywhere we look in the universe, we see evidence that shows that what the Bible says about its age is consistent and that the heavens really do declare the glory of the Lord. The evidence of carbon-14 in diamonds, for instance, shows that Earth cannot be millions or billions of years old. 
The discovery of soft tissue in dinosaur fossils leaves paleontologists scratching their heads because squishy dino tissue can't last millions of years. And the beauty of spiral galaxies and blue stars that astronomers observe through telescopes can only be seen if those formations are young. From a scientific point of view, Earth looks young because, well, it is young. And that evidence supports the historical account in Genesis that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The more we understand science, the better we understand how great God is and how he created and preserves our home here on a very young earth.